Hi folks and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to use geometry nodes to make procedural blocks of hydrogels out of any geometry where you can customize how polymer chains are distributed inside. We'll be using the points to curve node which was introduced from Blender version 4.0 so please make sure you have this version or higher if you're watching this video in the future. Just to clarify, these illustrations are just to create simple schematics of hydrogels where polymer chains are randomly distributed in the block of the polymer. So let's get started. Shift A and add a mesh cube, open up geometry nodes and give it a new node tree, call it hydrogel. And let's also name this object a hydrogel. So the first thing we're going to do is convert this whole mesh into a volume. So go ahead and look for a mesh to volume node. And immediately after that, look for a distribute points in volume node. So all we've done is convert it to volume, then put some points in that volume. And we're going to use the density to bring up the number of points inside that volume. You can leave the distribution setting to random. I find that I get much better distributions of polymer chains if I also create a bunch of points along the surface of that object and add this to the points we just created in the volume. So go ahead and add a distribute points on faces node from the original geometry input and this will output a bunch of points as well. Add a join geometry node and join together the points from the volume with the points on the surface and you should see that you get a much more cubic looking distribution of points. Now let's turn these points into polymer chains. Let's bring in the main player for today's tutorial, the point to curve node. So essentially this node works by creating an ID and assigning it to all of the points. Then it connects all the points with the same ID into the same curve. By default, all the points are given the same ID. And so all of this here is just a single curve, which all the points are connected into. To make multiple chains though, we need to split them up. And to do that, we need to assign more than one ID. Go ahead and look for a random value node, set it to integer, and plug the value into the curve group ID. The larger the max value that you set here, the wider the range of IDs that are assigned, which in turn means more chains. So if I bring it all the way down to zero, we get the situation where we had before, where all the points are connected together. And if I toggle this up, we'll get more and more individual curves. So right now we have just some very straight edged chains. Let's go ahead and give them a little wiggle using some noise displacement. First, we need a few more points along each of those curves that we can use to displace. So add a resample curve node. Make sure you keep the count size to something manageable. This is especially important if you have many different polymer chains that you set here with the random value, because the higher the resample curve here, the more the number of points each of these individual curves will subsequently have. For now, I'm going to set it to something like 20. Next, add a set position node, a vector math node, and a noise texture node. Connect the color output from the noise texture into the vector math, set the vector math to subtract and subtract 0.5 and then connect the vector output into the offset. Now you can see we've basically just started displacing some of the chains so they're not just straight. You can play with the scale to control the length scale over which the wiggling happens. If you find that you don't have enough geometry to make the spatial resolution of the noise show up properly, you'll need to up the resample curve node. I'm just going to bring down the random value. I'm also going to bring down the density of the points that we're creating earlier on. So we have fewer points. So I'm going to set both the volume and the faces points to three. Then I'm going to up the resample curve node value to 100. Then I'm going to bring the scale down to something quite small, like one. And now we have something that's looking more like a bunch of tangled chains. To get the look that you want, you can always play with the level of detail in the noise texture, the roughness, distortion, and all of these parameters. Next, we want to solidify these curves into actual polymer chains. Look for a curve to mesh node, enable fill caps, and look for a curve circle, and connect that to the profile curve input for the curve to mesh. And we have ourselves a bunch of polymer chains. Change the radius value of that curve circle to get finer or fatter polymer chains. Just so that your computer doesn't break here, I recommend that you lower the resolution to something smaller. We can either set it to something like eight, provided that we have shade smooth enabled, which it currently is. There's one more thing that you might want to do, which is to change the length of these polymer fibers. So right now, all of them are quite long and work their way around the entire hydrogel. And maybe you want shorter strands that are dispersed in the hydrogel block. To do that, you want to look for a trim curve node and drop that in any point before the curve to mesh operation. So I'm going to place that here in between set position and the curve to mesh. And so this allows us to trim each of these curves 
based on their factor. So I can trim from their ends, but I can also trim from their start by bringing this up. And so I can trim both ways. And this can help you to create more isolated fragments rather than a sort of dense network of chains. And so now we have our polymer chains. Just one last step. Let's add a material using the set material node. Let's come to the material properties and create a new material and call it polymer chain. And I'm going to set it to a, a reddish color and select that in the set material. So if I come to the rendered view, we have ourselves a network of polymer chain. And now we can change the way this looks by playing with the density of points that we input and also the scale of the noise. And so we have good procedural control over how this looks. So here are all the nodes that we currently have going. I'm going to go ahead and select all of them, press Control J and frame them together and call these the polymer chain nodes. Now we need to bring back the original geometry to illustrate the actual sort of block of hydrogel that the polymer chains are inside. So first add a join geometry node and plug that in after the set material for the polymer chains. Bring it up a bit and directly connect the input geometry, which is our cube, and plug that into the join geometry. So you can see that doing that, we kind of have a situation where the polymer chains intersect and also bump outside of this block of hydrogel, which we don't want. Go ahead and look for a transform geometry node, add that to the, the new branch that we've just created and change the scale of that cube to something larger than one. So I'm going to scale this to 1.25, let's say. This should be enough. So we're basically increasing the overall size of the cube. And this gives us enough clearance between the geometry and polymer chains we created inside. Let's also add a little bit of surface texture. Add a subdivide mesh node. Depending on how well your computer handles this, add uh, enough levels to give yourself enough geometry to work with. I'll start with something tame like four. Next, add a, a set position node, a normal node, a vector math node, a noise texture node, and let's connect these together. Set the vector math to scale rather than add. Plug in the normal value into the vector input and connect the noise texture factor into the scale. Connect the vector output of the scale into the offset. You'll also want to look for a math node, just a regular math node. Add that between the noise texture and the scale vector math, set it to multiply. And this multiply value is going to be sort of like a displacement strength control. Add a set shade smooth node after the set position. So now we have a slightly distorted looking block of material. I'm going to change the scale of the noise texture to be quite low periodicity. So something like two and keep the multiply to something low as well, like 0.2. So even with a subdivide mesh of level four, we can get enough physical displacement going to look something like this. So this is beginning to look like a wobbly block of polymer. Let's also create a material for this block. Add a set material node again, come to the material properties tab, add a new material and let's call it hydrogel, which is a bit ironic because the whole thing is a hydrogel, but uh, you'll get my point. Come to the transmission and increase the transmission weight to one. Let's lower the roughness to something like 0.3. And now let's select, select the hydrogen material in the set material. And then we have a basic block of hydrogel with a bunch of chains inside. So that's the basic node tree done. So I'm just going to select the top nodes, control J to frame them again, and call this the outer polymer block. So in theory, you can apply this geometry node to other input geometries. You can make a slab of hydrogel rather than just a cube. You could put it on a sphere and so on. So just to demonstrate, let me go ahead and add a UV sphere, create a new node tree and just assign the hydrogel. And there we also can do the same thing. All right, so we've now created a spherical ball of hydrogel. And that's basically it. Just a quick one today, but I hope you found it useful and learned something new by following along. Please leave a like and a comment if you found this particularly useful for you. Subscribe for more stuff like this and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye for now.